Welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd take up George from Negative Feedback's um, challenge of producing the greatest, best film photo of all time. Put the word there. Hey, put the word there. You should definitely check out, um, if you haven't seen it, um, George put out a new video and basically he said about creating the best film photo of all time. And I thought it was quite funny. I thought it was, I thought it was quite a fun little thing to try out. Um, when I was watching it, at first I was kind of, I felt personally, personally attacked at first because I thought I was unique. I thought I, I basically went through my archives trying to find the most typical, the most quintessential film photo motifs that I could think of. Basically the challenge is to create the greatest film photo of all time using as many film photo motifs, typical film photo motifs in a sort of collage style. I'm going to show you guys which photos I chose, why I chose them, and then we're going to jump into Photoshop and then I'm going to show you guys how I put them all together. All right. Okay. So first I've got a picture of a film camera. I think what could be more film photo than an actual film camera and a point and shoot at that as well. I've chosen this photo because it's a night photo. It's an old abandoned car, but it's an abandoned car underneath a tarp. That's three motifs in one. Got another night photo, but this time a neon photo at night tick, a laundromat. This was actually taken with my iPhone. Next up is um, a picture of some random flowers, sort of abstract picture of a building, abstract creative portraits with some fruit. I feel that's very typical of a film photographer trying to incorporate sort of still life, some weird abstract poses, a cropped in composition of just some random body part. This image actually I've chosen as my backdrop um, onto which everything will be collaged onto. And this is just like a nice big wide landscape scenery. On the top here you can see what the film stock for each image was. Moving on swiftly, we've got the double exposure. You can't have the greatest film photo of all time without a double exposure somewhere in there. I've also got a nice little still life um, picture here. This one is a really nice old mid-century um, chair and also on top of that you've got the nice long shadows. The reason why I took this photo is because I got strong Ed Hopper vibes. Some nude art. Now usually you'll find that it's a uh, very pretty half naked girl but because i don't want to be demonetized chose this one specifically because not only is it nude art but because it is a mirror selfie do you even shoot film if you haven't taken a mirror selfie of yourself with your film camera and on top of that it also has a nice little geometric sliver of light a nice little arty tasteful beautiful sliver of light that's another triple threat photo we've got the nude art the mirror selfie with the film camera and the artistic sliver of light so now that you know what the images were what the original images looked like let's jump into photoshop and let me show you guys what i came up with so let's just solve the blank image as a base layer to the most epic film photo ever is this landscape photo this is an image of the famous seven sisters cliff um, in Eastbourne that's where it is in case you're wondering I put the laundromat in the corner here and then firstly I added the phone box up here I added that shadow just to make it look a bit more realistic at first I was thinking to try and make it realistic but then I thought to myself there's no way I'm gonna be able to make this look realistic so I thought I'd go down the path of sort of more collage more surreal more Salvador Dali I added the chair it's interesting because you'll see that the shadows kind of go in towards each other which kind of doesn't make sense since the sun is coming from one direction either way i think it still looks kind of cool if you don't look at the phone book like that that looks like it could almost be there for real i added a building again we're going salvador dali kind of kind of vibes so i thought there was a lot of negative space in that corner so i put the building there I flipped upside down these two corners kind of communicated with each other i put the model in the corner here just to fill that bit of dead space there but I wanted her to be tucked in between the cliff and the beach. So it looks like she's just popping up from behind that crest. The picture of the flowers, I was sort of struggling where to put this, the, the flowers. So I decided to completely replace the cliff with the flowers. 
uh, the, the double exposure here made it look like I was stepping out of the sea and standing onto the beach. So I made the hand sort of reach out towards the chair. What better place to put the camera than in the hand? Another layer for the thumb. So as you can see, the water sort of comes over the foot there. So it looks like I'm standing in the sea. Looks a bit more realistic that way. So I put the car <clears throat> on the darker sort of pebbles on the beach because I thought that the the, it blended a bit more easily over here so that's why I put the car over there I put my mirror selfie over here so the reason why I put myself behind the phone box here is because the left side of me is in shadow so I thought it kind of made sense that um, it would look like the shadow from the phone box was sort of casting a shadow onto the left side of me so that's why I placed myself here behind the phone box. I mean, none of this kind of makes sense, but that is my final image. Put the work in. Yeah. Tell baby girl, hey girl, she got to do it with a purpose. And Madonna by the mirror, man, I heard that she a virgin. Sheesh. You know, I thought it was actually quite fun. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would. Tell me what you thought of it. Let me know down in the comments. Write something nice down below, guys. To all the new subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. And to all of you who made it to the very end, well done, guys. Plenty more videos to come. Subscribe if you enjoyed what you watched. Yeah, if you don't know how we do things around here, I upload to the channel twice a week. That's right, twice a week. Follow me on Instagram, as Zane Shoots Film. Check out my portfolio at ZaneReason.com. With all that said and done, boys and girls, keep learning, keep shooting. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye.